Many experts believe to solve the crime issue, we need to tackle mental health first. Our Stephen Graves joins us now with that part of the story. Stephen. Yeah, struggles with mental health we know have always been an issue, but counselors tell me they haven't seen it really thrust into the forefront until recently, mainly because of new wrinkles, right? The pandemic, social media pressures. It really has forced groups to take a close look at this, tackling it specifically with young people. When you sit in this circle sharing feelings and thoughts. I'm always thinking about a lot. It's not a choice, but a requirement. And through the group identity, that's where we see our greatest strides. Armin Davis is a senior counselor with the organization Becoming a Man or BAM. He leads groups of young men grades 6 to 12, getting them to look at each other and express emotions. Recently, talks involve anxiety and depression over social media. A lot of students uh, deal with esteem issues, and so a lot of the work is really helping them to understand that you don't have to show up this way because of likes and this thing called attention that everybody else is seeking, but you can actually get it in a healthy way. A healthy way that does not lend itself to gun violence, but isolation due to the pandemic has presented new challenges. Some emotional controls around anger, that's why we do positive anger expression. Philip Cusick, senior director of BAM, helps coordinate with the city to bring discussions into schools. The city as a whole is tackling mental health more by increasing funding to about $89 million this year. Most goes toward clinics and mental health professionals with the goal of helping anyone. After a shooter killed seven in suburban Highland Park. There's always this conversation about those people's mental health and how did they get access to guns. Some groups like Teamwork Inglewood want the discussions about behaviors and family dynamics and suspects of everyday shootings to become normal. That's not always the case when we're talking about gun violence that happens in communities like Inglewood. The hope is that when that happens, more resources can pour in and vital talks continue. They're able to make a better decision than they would have if they had not had that experience. And as you can see, I sat in on one of those talks. They really do help. And on the city's behalf, for the first time in its history, it's putting mental health professionals at the 911 call center. They're also bringing in some wellness training, some trauma-informed training into neighborhoods. But the challenge, guys, is getting people to come out and take advantage of it. Right, there's yeah. a stigma there, but for you to sit mm -hmm. into that session, what was it like to see these young people open up? Well, you know, they specifically were the counselors, but with me and talking, I can tell you just talking about feelings and get it out there, it makes you think about things you wouldn't normally. And actually being seen and heard, it really makes a difference. So. How to deal with it. That's yeah, exactly, how to deal with it. Yeah. Great right. story, Steve.